My name is Juman M. Tambarike, and I'm here to tell you the story of the African 21st century hunters and gatherers. The story starts with my cousin brother. His name is Hassan. He's an amazing young guy. He's supporting a family of eight people, but it was never like that. Back in 2011, after he finished secondary school, unfortunately, he was not able to continue to high school because his results didn't allow him to be able to do that. Like in any African family, this is an amazing time for everyone to tell you, I told you so, you should focus on your studies. But uh, Hassan had a different idea in mind. He knew what he wanted to do. Some of the family members suggested, you know what, you should go back to school again, do two years so that you can repeat the exam. Somewhere like, you know, uh, just go and opt for vocation or education maybe, because you need to learn some new skills so that you can remain relevant in this family. But Asani said, no, I want to become a photographer. And everyone was like, oh, serious? In a family full of engineers and doctors, you really want to take pictures? <laughs> Fortunately, I was there, and I know how capable he was. He was a very good photographer, and he was a very good graphics designer. Fast forward a few years later, Hassan is a very good and well-accomplished creative director. He has done multiple projects. He has created an employment opportunity for several other young people and is actually supporting his family. One thing for sure, I don't know what would have happened if he actually passed his exam in Form 4 and went to high school and then joined a university to attain a tertiary degree because there are so many other people out there, like Hassan, who are actually surviving in urban area with their skills that can easily be converted into cash, what I call them urban skills. And opposite of that is so many other young people who have actually got an opportunity to go to the university, but actually they don't have the skills required for them to survive. In 2013, it was a game changer for me and some of my colleagues who were walking around trying to figure out what is the best way actually to address the skills challenge in urban Africa. One of the departments of the government of Tanzania, the Immigration Office, they announced employment opportunity for corporal and constable officers. They were looking for 70 people. 12,000 people showed up in a football stadium for those 70 posts. The chances of someone getting a job in that circumstance was less than 1%, but still those young people showed up. It shows you how desperate urban youths are for jobs. Africa is getting urbanized more than ever before. The rate of urbanization is more than 40%. And the continent also is getting younger than ever before. The age average, the median age average of an African is 19.7 years old. These people roughly will need jobs for the next 20 to 30 years. How do we create these jobs? 10 million youth are getting into the job market in Africa every year. Our ability to create employment opportunity for them is less than 30%. So we have two options, whether to think we are wasting time with the urban skills or to seriously start to capitalize on them. Whether you are in Dar es Salaam, you are in Accra, you are in, I don't know, Lagos, or you are in Cape Town, the problem is still the same. We create a lot of these opportunities and platforms for young people, believing that we can be able to address some of the most pressing issues they face today what we are forgetting, we are living in a very different age. What we try to equip them in terms of knowledge, in terms of skills, is very irrelevant to the times that they are living in. Our option is to capitalize on what we have. Our option is to capitalize on the digital economy. Our option is to capitalize on the sharing, on the platform economy. And this is not a luxury, this is a necessity because according to Google and IFC, the Africa internet economy is estimated to reach 180 billion USD by 2025. 
It will create a lot of opportunities for African youth and will be one of the solution to one of the most pressing challenges that is facing our, our, our continent today. In most of our academic institutions, we are still adapting the second and first generation university where our emphasis is basically on academic and research. We are not seeing innovation and entrepreneurship and alternative reskilling as options for African youth. We are so much obsessed by these young guys scoring good GPAs and scoring good academic qualification, and we don't know what will happen once they eat the job market. Now we face two problems. First, we don't have enough jobs for most of the African youth who are getting into the job market. And then we are facing a huge skills mismatch because what they're being taught at the university is not actually what they find when they go out there. Our best option is to actually now to start to think strategically. How can we be able to capitalize on urban skills? How can we be able to create more 21st century African hunters and gathers? Young people with very rare skills that are on demand that can easily be converted into cash because actually they need to survive by a day. They need to support their families and they need to create opportunities for others. Robots are real and they're taking our jobs. They might not be physical robots, but actually software is eating jobs in Africa. While we still have millions of youth in tertiary education right now doing courses like procurement degree, file management and secretarial works, most of these jobs will become irrelevant because anything that is repetitive, literally a robot can be able to do it. Maybe we have an alternative option. Let's try an informal sector. Let's try to convert this, all of these young people into some kind of border border drivers and capitalize in border border economy because it's generating enough money. But the key question is, is it sustainable enough? And how long can we be able to do that? One fact is that the informal sector in Africa is formal. If we can be able to capitalize on technology and digital transformation and equip people, especially young people with relevant skills, they can be able to create the opportunities we're actually looking for. So my big idea is let's capitalize on urban skills. Let's create uh, policies and regulations that will encourage young people to adapt these skills Let's invest in urban skills lab, places where young people can be able to equip themselves with knowledge on 21st century skills. Let's create opportunities for them to attain this knowledge through massive open online courses and different programs that can equip them with these skills. And also, let's create universities that encourage multi-competence and challenge-based learning so that they can attain the four Cs. They can be um, collaborative, they can communicate well, they can be creative, but also they can think critically. What happens if we don't do that? If we don't do that, the situation, will be, the situation will become like super complex because most of these young people will be disappointed and then it will become a battle between the young people and the government. We are seeing it happening in all African major cities where youth are so much disappointed and for anything small that happened between them and the government, the first thing they rush into the Lord and protest. It is not happening because they hate the thing, it's happening because opportunities are not evenly distributed and the gap between the have and the have not is widening. The time is now, we need to capitalize on the future of work we need to capitalize on equipping these young people with relevant future and digital skills before it worsens up. I'm unapologetic, optimistic that our time is now and the fourth industrial era is an era for Africa. Thank you so much.